As a volunteer firefighter, John Petro was asked to ready the station's fire engines and line them up along the road, in tribute to a young soldier whose remains were being returned to his family. As the procession entered his town, he was taken by an unexpected sight. The closer the funeral procession got, the louder this noise that we could hear, a large rumble, deep bellowing rumble. And all of a sudden, you could, all you could see is leather wearing, bandana wearing motorcycle riders. At first, I thought it was some kind of a gang or something coming to town. But shortly after, there was the hearse carrying the soldiers' remains. The outpouring of patriotism was unbelievable. The people in the towns were all outside standing on the sidewalks and in the streets. You would have thought it was a Fourth of July parade for all the American flags, and, and that's what captured my heart. I wanted to do this, and I wanted to show a little bit of something to my country. Started in 2005, the Patriot Guard formed to shelter families of fallen soldiers from protesters. Today, their mission extends to welcome home celebrations, deployment ceremonies, and volunteer work, with over 250,000 members nationwide. Uh, you won't get a tighter group of people. I mean, every time you see one, everybody's hugging, shaking each other's hands, and rain or shine, they're there. We stood out in the cold, we stood in the rain, and it's great to have somebody standing there with you. And there always is somebody there right beside you. We're there to stand for those who stood for us. Some of them gave the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, some of them are, are willing to lay it all on the line and, and fortunate enough to come back home. And everybody's got their stories of uh, what they had to experience uh, overseas. And while not required, many of the Guard members are veterans themselves who, after witnessing the treatment of returning Vietnam vets decades ago, have vowed to make sure this generation and their families experience something much different. I didn't get treated like that. I wanted people to respect the soldiers that were coming home. When they landed, they were just turned loose. Nobody welcomed them home. That's what the respect is all about. Honoring the vets, it's honoring us. And while welcoming returning soldiers is an important part of their mission, the Patriot Guard remains focused on the families of those soldiers who do not come home. We're there for the family, even after the limelight goes away. After the services are done and after the newspapers are done, the Patriot Guard writers are gonna make sure that we keep connected to those families to let them know that there are people that are out here in the community that's never gonna forget their hero. And for Anita Walker, there's been no bigger hero than her son, Robbie. At 19 years old, he joined the Marines serving eight years as a sergeant in the infantry mortar mission. After returning to civilian life, he re-enlisted, this time in the Army. My son loved everybody, and he was a very happy jokester kid, and even when he was growing, he never had a mean attitude, he always smiled, and he believed in what he was doing. On July 8, 2004, Sergeant Colville was killed when a mortar round hit his Baghdad headquarters. After John learned of Anita's loss, he received permission to honor her with a Patriot Guard plaque on behalf of her son's service. It was emotional, but I was honored about my son giving the ultimate sacrifice. And he'll never be forgotten. That gesture that we will never forget or have never forgotten has touched her because now she and I have become very close friends. She knows that if she ever needs anything, all she has to do is call me. And, and it's like, you know, he's an added son, is how I feel. He calls and checks on me. He comes out here with these big truck and plows my drive in the winter. You know, he's a wonderful person. And that call came. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Sergeant Koval's death. And his oldest son, only four years old when his father passed, is all grown and returning to his father's hometown. And Anita couldn't ask for a better homecoming crew than the Patriot Guard. When Sergeant Koval was killed in action, he didn't get anything to remember his father by. And she wanted to know if there was anything that I could do for her to, to welcome him home, to let him know that people will never forget his father and the sacrifice that he had made. And I said, absolutely. John put out the call and the Patriot Guard riders answered. 
dozen showed up to surprise Travis with his own Patriot Guard escort to the family's farm. I started crying. I thought, okay, John Petro said there was only gonna be just a few. And my grandson said, look at them motorcycles, Nana. And then my friend that was driving the car and he just kept driving and Travis says, no, you can't go up there. He said, them look like Patriot Guard riders. And he didn't realize that it was for him. <laughs> and I just started crying and I thought, oh, heavens. <laughs> just my heart just goes 100 mile an hour. <laughs> Cause I just, honoring my son. I just want him remembered. He was a good kid. On behalf of a grateful America and the Indiana Patriot Guard, Travis, please accept our sincere condolences on your tragic loss of your father. May your pain be tempered by the knowledge that Sergeant Robert Cole Jr., United States Army, is a true American hero and will always be in our hearts. We will never forget. Your father was a hero, son. Never forget that because we will never. <laughs>